Welcome everyone to Sober Gaming, where we believe gaming is the only addiction you will ever need. Today I'm bringing you 39 tips and tricks of RL Craft. Stick until the end of the video to get the best ones. Tip number one, you cannot punch a tree in RL Craft. You actually need to grab flint and uh, get that shit out of here. I'm not here to bore you with beginner's tips. If you're a beginner and want a beginner's guide, you can find it on my channel. Now let's talk about real useful tips. I uh, will start with basic ones and we'll move to better ones so you better stick around. Tip number one, if you see this windmill, what comes to your mind? Trading? Enchanted books? Safe space? Well, when I see this windmill, I see a ton of levels. Yes, farming gives you XP. This windmill alone will give you enough levels to get to mid-game. So get your farming to level 12 and get to work. Tip 2. Since you have watched my beginner's guide, you know how to get wood. It is faster to get wood in our craft since the entire tree falls when you cut the bottom block. But do you know what is the best tree? Jungle trees. These huge trees will drop so much wood you can build yourself your own village that will be burned by a dragon. To get planks you need to place wood like so, then take your axe and get that peasant shit out of here. If you want to get planks or sticks you go and mine iron and craft yourself a saw. Use this saw to get planks and sticks like this. And this, work smart, not hard. Tip 4. Thirst is a bitch, especially when you constantly fight. Purified water you say? Hmm, weakness disgusts me. What are you, some kind of a noble to drink purified water? Just bring me a bucket and I'll show you a bucket. Grab the water with a bucket, place the water with a bucket, throw away your favorite bucket, drink the water with no bucket, then pick up your favorite bucket, grab the water with a bucket, fight with water in your bucket. Tip 5. Remember how you started with flint tools? Remember that plant string? Well, you can actually use those plant strings to make wool, bows and handles. No need to go spider hunting or find sheep if you can go and mown your lawn. Tip 6. This one is easy but will change your playthrough. Atlas. Make yourself two atlases, copy them and leave one in the base. Everything that you explore will be automatically saved on both of them, including waypoints that you can place using right click. Now you don't need coordinates and compasses. Tip 7. Simple but a must know. Waste stones in villages. Make sure to activate them all so you can teleport between them using only a couple of levels. This is extremely useful for late game when you don't want to fly 5000 blocks. Tip 8. Call it a son of a bitch. However, it is easy to deal with it when you are not fighting. Make yourself some wool clothing and you are set. However, when you do fight you need your armor equipped and you can use a bucket. Grab the lava with a bucket, place the lava with the bucket. Warm your ass with favorite bucket, grab the lava with a bucket. Heat is son of a bitch too, however each one of you has a friend that will help you deal with heat. Can you guess what it is? Grab the water with a bucket, place the water with a bucket, throw away your favorite bucket, drink the water with no bucket, jump inside your favorite bucket, cool your ass inside your bucket, then pick up your favorite bucket, grab the water with a bucket. Tip 10. This is a very obvious but has to be mentioned. Get a flying mount. They are a game changer. Start with an easy one, a rock. If you don't know how to tame one, look at my beginner's guide. The earlier you get a flying mount, the faster you will get to end game. Tip 11. Very basic tip. Craft a tool belt and use it to store your weapons and tools. Upgrade it with bell pouch for more slots. Now let's talk about not so basic tips that will help you get to the mid and late game. Tip 12. Battle towers. Very good starting dungeon. Couple of cheesy ways to do them. First you can stack blocks on the side where there are chests and loot them without fighting anyone. 
Second cheesy way to finish battle towers requires flying mount. Told you you will need one. Craft arrows with pistons, fly on top of the tower and yet that golem into the space. Enjoy the loot. Now if you want to do them legit, I suggest to craft summoning stuff and call for Aegis's help. Make sure to have saber or rapier equipped so they would do more damage. Tip 13. When you get enough diamonds from battle towers, make sure to craft Ring of Resistance. It gives you 20% damage reduction, which is extremely helpful, especially when you don't have protection for enchanted armor yet. However, this is not all. You know what is better than one chocolate bar? You know what is better than one day off? You know what is better than one Christmas present? Two. Two of each. Two of each is always better. So make another ring and slap it on yourself because now you have 40% damage reduction. Hell yeah. Tip 14. Aussie Liner is extremely useful to attach to your armor to prevent being very cold or very warm and found in old dungeons. But you already knew that and don't worry this is not the tip. My tip is that there are these liner snips that let you remove one layer of lining. It will leave reusable lining on the grid. Well, it doesn't work on Aussie, so if you combine Aussie with one of your armor pieces, don't try to remove it, or you will lose the Aussie liner. You can only get back cool or warm liners. Tip 15. When you craft any kind of equipment in Craft, it will have a specific quality ranging from broken, useless and awful to godlike, masterful and legendary, and anything in between. All those qualities add different buffs or debuffs from minus 15 attack speed to plus 400 to attractiveness. So if you do get a shitty debuff on armor, weapon or equipment, you can reforge it in reforging station using material that was used to build that item. Quality you're looking for is masterful or legendary. Now pray to RNGesus. Jesus. Tip 16. You can have the best armor in Arl Craft and still get one shot by mobs. The real power comes when you start to enchant your armor and weapons. I will make a different video on enchanting on its own, but know that there is a disenchanting table that will let you disenchant the first enchantment on any equipment. If you found an iron chestplate with advanced protection 3, take it and remove that enchantment with this disenchanting table. Tip 17. This is not a must, but it will help you make your base more productive. In Arl Craft, you have to craft and light all torches with flint and steel or matches. By the way, if you do that one by one, you're wasting time. Just combine a stack of torches with flint and steel and light them all at once. But that is not the tip. Those torches will burn out eventually and you'll need to reignite them, which is a pain in the ass. Regular torches that stay lit forever require you to use glowstone, which is very expensive if you need lots of them. So be a barbarian and grab all torches that you see from battle towers and villages because those will last forever and they are free. Tip 18. Now in Aural Craft there is equipment forge where you can make custom weapons and custom tools. This is a long discussion of its own for another video on all custom OP items that you can craft because there is lots of combinations. But I'll let you know how to make basic custom item that will last you until the late game. You have to level up building to level 6 and combine the crafting table with a wood axe to craft equipment forge. Then craft iron rod, iron guard and iron paxel. Combine it in that order, add your new equipment forge and you got yourself a diamond shovel, hoe, pickaxe and axe all in one item that has no durability and will last you forever. Tip 19. In case you decide to live near scorched desert, or better yet inside it, make sure to take advantage of tumbleweed that flies around. If you break it, it will drop one of these items. Bones, dead bush, string, feather, wheat, stick, sugarcane, melon, seed, pumpkin seed, gold nugget, name tag, saddle, emerald, diamond, iron ingot, and golden ingot. Doesn't seem like much until you get yourself a free diamond on day one just by breaking tumbleweed. 
Tip 20, if you still don't understand why you freeze in the desert and burn in the ice biomes, I will help you out. There are actual seasons in our craft which makes temperature go up or down depending on the season. Be prepared by crafting a season clock. You can hold it to see what season you are in right now or you can put it in the frame on the wall like a clock. Stylish and useful. Tip 21. Backpack seems like a starting item and not as useful but the cool part about them is that they don't despawn. They're portable chests. In case you find something rare and it is tough situation you can always put it in the backpack and even if you die that something rare won't despawn because it is in the backpack. Tip 22. Not many new players know that it is extremely easy to craft good bandages. I'm not talking about the one with the string only, I'm talking about the one that require healing salve. That healing salve can be crafted with cactus and wooden bowl. Combine it all together and now you will be able to heal about 6 hearts. Tip 23. There will be a few times when something big, hairy and scary will kill you over and over again. You die, come back, pick up your loot, die again, come back, pick up your loot, die again. You can save yourself some travel time by crafting a death scroll that will teleport you to the last death place. Now you don't need to walk to die again. Also if you do want to fix the situation just make a chest with 300 stone swords. After 10 death and 10 hits with a stone sword it might die eventually so don't try to use fists. Tip 24. Now in case you are a pro and exploring 5000 blocks away from your base, you better start using recall potions or return scrolls that teleport you back to the bed or last way stone you activated. Stop playing Death Stranding in Arl Craft and just use recall potions or return scrolls. Tip 25. In the beginning of RL Craft, every bit of damage and survivability will help you out. So just before you get all fancy bubbles like Dragon's Eye and Ank Charm, just craft a few simple bubbles that will give you random buffs like attack damage, attack speed, jump height and so on. In case you get some negative debuff, just craft a new one because they're really cheap. Tip 26. Now, I didn't know this until this Wednesday myself, but did you know you can smelt armor in RL Craft? Let's say you raided 10 battle towers and you have good gear so you don't need those 16 diamond chest plates. Put them in the furnace and smelt them for diamonds that you can use to make yourself something useful, like thrown from diamonds. Now let's get to the best tips, the tips that you have been waiting for because you already knew everything earlier. Tip 27. Eventually you will want to build yourself a the best armor in the game, Golem Armor. To do that you will need to find runes in these small underwater mobless dungeons or these wooden structures on top of the water. Grab them, put them in advanced rune reader, don't use the basic one by the way, and it will show you the crafting recipe of forgotten unique items that you can craft in the crafting table. All the crafting recipes are unique to your server so some of them might be easy and some of them might require you to go to the end city which might make it challenging. Tip 28 is related to making golem armor. Most of the time recipes from runes will require a specific music disc. You can use that basic trap to trap the creeper, shoot him twice with a bow and let some random skeleton finish him off for the disc. However, this is child's play. What I would prefer is to build a simple vanilla mob spawner in the sky above the ocean with a drop of 22 blocks give or take to get unlimited arrows, bones, rod and flash, string, gunpowder, XP and of course music discs. If you want to know how to build this mob spawner, join my streams at 6pm PST. Tip 29. There are a ton of new creatures in RL Craft and some of them drop their meat. Cook all of it and try eating. There are some OP buffs that you can get by eating cooked meat from new creatures. For example, cooked aspid meat will give you 20 second regen and cooked maca meat will give you 20 second of absorption too. 
Try them all and pick your favorite one. Tip 30. A good survival game has to have cooking, otherwise it is not a survival game. In Elder Craft, you can cook a ton of food from mobs, but you can actually cook meals that are not only taste perfect, but will also give you even better buffs than just by eating some cooked meat. For example, Blood Chili will give you Leech 2, Risotto will give you Fall Resistance 2, Haste 4, Speed 4, Water Breathing, Jump Boost 3 and Swift Swimming 3. And Battle Burrito will give you Strength 4, Absorption 4, Regeneration 2, Resistance 2 and Rejuvenation. Again, you will have to try all those meals yourself and pick your favorite one. Tip 31. When you start to be a bit more powerful, you won't have a luxury to wear a backpack since it requires a chest plate slot. So you still have to store the item somewhere that you must not lose no matter what happens. You can actually store items in pets. Better yet, you can dismiss them and they will still hold all those items in the dark abyss where you banish them when you don't need them. Tip 32. This one is a bit controversial. Some players agree, some disagree. In my opinion, you should build an XP farm with Zephyrs. Earlcraft will require you thousands of levels to level up everything to max and it is close to impossible to get that legit way unless you want to spend a year on it. And this is not including hundreds of enchanting that you will need to do. So save yourself some time to enjoy the game and build an XP farm. If you want to know how to build one, join me on my streams at 6pm PST. Tip 33. This one might be obvious but worth mentioning. Sirens are annoying and deadly because they draw you out and other sea creatures will come to bite a piece of your booty shortly. So build earplugs with two wooden buttons and be safe. However, this is not the end of this tip. If you love Tide Guardian armor as much as I am, you will need shiny scales. You can get them from hippocampuses or you can pick up sirens with your rock while they have earplugs and take them on a premiere of up. They won't attack you or your rock if you have earplug equipped. So drop them for some free shiny scales. Tip 34. Crafting in oral craft has been optimized with all the recipes on the right hand side once you open crafting or your inventory. Not only you can make an item straight away from that menu and look at what ingredients are missing, but you can also save recipe on the left hand side by pressing A button while hovering over an item. This is very useful to save recipes that you use a lot, like death scrolls for example. You can also use that menu to save items that you're trying to find or trying to craft for later but don't have all materials. I use it to remember my world's recipe for golem armor, for example. Tip 35. Have your base been demolished by random events? I tell you. Well, there is an actual summoning pedestal that can summon creatures like Aegises to protect your base or a specific area. It uses one redstone per summon, which is extremely cheap in my opinion. Endless possibilities with this unique block. Tip 36. Now this one is very quick tip, you can use birch wood logs to make paper in our craft. Seems like it's such an easy tip to include in tier 3, huh? Well, you will thank me when you die in the end or nether and have no paper in the base, but have some birch wood logs to craft your death scroll. Tip 37. A bit of a complicated tip for enchanting. Eventually you will reach that game stage where you will have to enchant something to reset the crafting table and maybe get protection 1 or sharpness 1 to combine books into something good. Well, all same items will have exactly the same enchanting options no matter what material they are made of. So all chest plates will have the same options to enchant. The cheapest armor to enchant for enchantment extraction to books will be chain armor. You see, full iron set armor will cost you 24 iron ingots, while chain armor set will cost you only 11 iron ingots. So if you're trying to get simple enchants like protection 4, 
or hard ones like Strength and Vitality better use Chain Armor rather than Iron one because it is just cheaper. Tip 38. Wanted or not, you will die in Arl Craft and lose your levels. To ensure yourself, be sure to craft XP tomes with Ender Pearls and books. This is an easy way to store XP after a battle tower or if you're trying to save those levels to level up Iron Skin. Tip 39. If you found this structure in the beginning of the game, you might consider to make this uh, your base. And it has lots of chests, no mobs and lots of light. Explore it and see for yourself. Thank you everyone for watching. Please join my streams at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And make sure to comment down below your tips and tricks for future players who might be watching this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.